Aaron, do you have any more information on Stanton? No, not yet. Uh, we're we're kind of open now for the next couple hours. We'll guys will be getting treatment, um, but I wouldn't even imagine uh, that decision will happen probably till tomorrow. Kind of see where he's at and get a feel of that. I have not. Marley. Aaron, what do you expect the protocol will be for him today, and hitting in the cage and so on? What do you What do you want to see? Well, he he hit in the cage yesterday, um, and it went pretty well. Um, but we kind of had it try as much as we could to stay away from testing it or doing those kind of things. Obviously, with the off day today, so um, I'm not sure exactly what they'll run him through, but um, you know we'll kind of see and then uh, make a decision moving forward. But I don't really have much more information at this point. Kind of everyone's still sleeping. Barry. Right behind. Hey, Booney, what, what's the pitching plans right now for Wednesday? For Wednesday, it'll be kind of a bullpen day. Um, and, and again, kind of obviously depends a lot on what happens uh, uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, Jay Happ could very much be in the mix, um, as well as I, I picture our bullpen being, being unleashed in that day. So who's the opener? Oh well, that? I mean that'll all depend on tomorrow how, how we use guys, what we what the game ends up and um, we'll kind of see where we're at going into the next day. So, did when you took Green out as quickly as you did yesterday, was that in anticipation of the fact of what you have to do on Wednesday, or was there another reason for it? Uh, no, that no, because I mean we got days, you know, a couple days ahead of that, so. No, that that didn't factor into that. So, what was your in your thought process when you made that decision for to Green go from Green to Antavino? Yeah, um, you know, Greeny had been through two innings at that point, um, and just felt like we were set up to roll it out how we did. And um, you know, I think overall it, it it worked out pretty well. You know, we're up against it. I think first and second, one out there in the third, um, down one nothing, and we hold them to a run the rest of the game through the tenth inning. So. Um, not much more than Greeny had already gone two innings, um, liked Otto for that, for that part of the lineup and felt like we, we could roll it out pretty effectively from there. Dan on the right side. What have you uh, been seeing from Sanchez, uh, this pretty much the whole postseason and yeah. ha is there a thought of, of moving him in the lineup at all? Um, well, he's been hitting seventh, so you want to move him up or down? Down. <laughs> down no no he's um you know i feel like last night there were a couple pitches he got i felt like was all over but again put him on the net and th those are the times especially in the postseason when you're facing obviously great pitching you know where every pitch is you know so much poured into it um when you do get a pitch you got to take advantage and he had he had a couple last night where i thought he got his a swing off even in that james at bat there was one one pitch he got down in the middle of the plate that he put a really good swing on that's the ball you got to take advantage of uh in the postseason because because those mistakes are few and far between um so he's just got to make sure he takes advantage of, of, of mistakes do a little bit better job of controlling the zone and and we know you know he's one swing away from really changing the game George. Aaron, how much is the weather report going to impact what you do on the weather report for Wednesday impact what you do for Tuesday? Um, not a lot, uh, um, you know, because, you know, I think if, if weather becomes an issue where the game were to get wiped out Wednesday, that kind of impacts what you do moving forward from there. But as far as Tuesday, you know, Seve's going. Um, you know, like our matchup there, feel like he gives us a great chance and um, but we'll, you know, kind of treat it aggressively and in trying to win that game. I don't really see Wednesday leaking into that too much. And um, bullpen wise, you think you'll have everybody for Tuesday? I mean, yeah, I do. There was a couple guys who gave you more than one inning. Yeah, um, you know, obviously we stretched Tommy a little bit. Greeny gave us a couple, but but I would expect both those guys to be available. Brendan, what's the likelihood you would start Hicks in Game Two? Game three. I would say there's a, definitely a chance of that. Um, you know, obviously depends a little bit on Giancarlo. Um, but Aaron is very much in play, especially now that we're here. 
you know, the center left combination of him and Guardy. Um, you know, it was good to get Aaron into the game last night. Um, thought he had a good at bat. Looked like Aaron Hicks, you know. Um, so he'll very much be part of the conversation uh, moving forward. Ken. Aaron, when you're going against a guy like Cole, who arguably is the best pitcher in the game at this moment, how much do you modify your strategy or expectations just just going into the game? Not a lot. I mean, we, you know, we expect to, to have success. We know it's going to be tough. Um, you know, the four o'clock game, the, the, the shadows will probably play an issue as well, make it make it difficult. But hopefully as a group, um, you know, we can have some success against them. Um, you know, whether that's wearing them down a little bit, whether that's taking advantage of, of a couple of mistakes that we do get. Um, again, expect Seve to go out and pitch really well. So, um I don't know if it's deviate much because he's going, you know, you've, you've got to be on top of your game if you're going to have success and that'll be our focus. Ron. What do you see as the difference in Cole between early in the season when you faced him and he was merely very good to from June on when he's been unbeaten? Uh, maybe just in complete control and command of pitches. Um, you know, his ability to, not only maintain his stuff um, throughout his outings, um, you know, the abil the ability to really pitch at the top of the strike zone with, with his high-end fastball um, and really command it up there, throw it, you know, at the top or expand just enough to get swings, um, and then a couple of electric breaking balls that he's just he's in a groove with. And so I would say the biggest thing, and, and always the separator for guys, you know, especially guys with elite stuff like he has is command, and he's commanding the ball, um, you know, as as well as he ever has. Brian, Aaron, Ottavino hasn't seemed quite as sharp as he was earlier in the year. Uh, just wondering, what do you think the reasons for that are, and how does that affect your bullpen hierarchy here? <clears throat> he's got to play a role for us, especially in this series, um, <clears throat> you know, with their right-handed hitters. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think it just – making sure the sharpness of the sliders there um again you know i know he comes in and gives up the first pitch home run yesterday but <clears throat> on a first pitch ambush on a mistake you know the definitely a pitch that he he left up and out over the plate a little too much um you know but he does come right back with a strikeout weak grounder strikeout um you know even going back to the last series where we put him in there against Cruz, where it was kind of at bats where he's not going to give in. So I don't think he's as far off maybe as, as is being talking, but he's certainly not as sharp as, as he's been most of the year. Um, but I feel like he's close to being that. And, and I think some small successes hopefully will spur him on because he needs to play a big role for us. I'll take just a few more Mark on the right, then Marley and then Eric. Aaron Severino was just in here talking about things he's learned over his three years pitching the postseason, and the biggest thing he said was just blocking out all the noise. How tough is that for anybody to do, but let alone still a relatively young pitcher who's, you know, not 10 years into the big leagues? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, another one of those little separators uh, this time of year. You know, you've got to be able to handle situations, handle the moment, handle um, adversity, handle success on the fly. Um, and the one thing about Sevy is I feel like he's he he's he's been through a lot you know as a as a young major leaguer you know lots of success some bumps in the road some stumbles an injury now this year um postseason experiences where he's fallen down where he's come back and dealt um so I think hopefully all those things um equip him well heading into tomorrow um, and, and so far since he's come back from the injury, I feel like he's handled himself really well. We saw in the Minnesota series where, you know, he got in about as big a jam as you can get in and I thought was in complete command of himself and of his emotions and ultimately was able to execute and get out of a huge inning and, and, and give us a good outing. So um, I, ver I, I feel like he's very equipped to go out there and whatever the result ends up being, he's in command of the moment. Aaron, is it fair to say that you guys have to be more careful with the Giancarlo Stan decision, you know, in terms of replacing him in the roster because you couldn't use it possibly in the World Series? Like if this was the first round, it would be a little bit different.
but if uh, if you replace them, you certainly couldn't. Yeah, I don't I don't know about first rounder now. I mean, obviously we understand if if we had to replace him, then he's he's down for the rest of the postseason. So you know, it is a sensitive decision. You know, a tough decision, and hopefully we make uh, the best decision. Um, but I don't know if this round changes that at all. Um, we'll just try and evaluate and, and um, you know try and get as honest as feedback as we can from Giancarlo, which we he's on the same page with and, and feel like we're having good communication there and um, try and make the best decision for us moving forward. Eric. Aaron, before Severino came back, you left open the possibility of him possibly having a bullpen role in the postseason. Was there one part of when you said everything's on the table? Mm -hmm. Was there one thing you guys saw from him those last three starts where you said you – we're comfortable giving him the ball in game three against Minnesota. And then obviously, you know, tomorrow, was there one thing that jumped out at you guys? Um, I, I don't know about one thing. First off, I was confident he was healthy from the get go from his first start back. Um, I thought he got a little sharper in the next one and the next one. Um, and then, um, I thought he did a really good job of, you know, coming back and all that came with that again of really staying in his delivery and controlling his, his emotions. And, um, there was no doubt in my mind that he was, you know, sound and ready to go and ready to contribute for us heading into the postseason as a starter. Um, and feel like, you know, for all he's been through this year, I feel like he's in a really good place for us right now. Dan. Aaron, how did uh, CC come out of last night? I mean, I haven't talked to him today, but good. Um, said he almost went down coming <laughs> running into the <laughs> running into the mound, which was you saw us get a laugh probably on the mound. Um, but it came out of it fine last night. I, I I haven't seen or talked to him yet today. And has Hap in play for for game three out of the bullpen, or do you have him lined up for game four in a longer stretch? Do you know right. yet? Um, that's something we haven't talked about yet. Um, you know, with any of these games, I think anything's possible and certainly comes into play. But, um, <clears throat> you know, there's a good chance he's obviously a big part of, of game four. I'll take just two last ones, Brendan and then John. Brendan's on John and then Barry. No, Barry. So uh, just a, your opinion – when you're kind of the bullpen games are really unprecedented at this time of year, mm -hmm. and especially when you're going up against teams that have deep starting pitching like Houston has, and if you get to the World Series against Washington, Washington certainly has. You know, is this optimal for you, or is just this is what you're doing the best with what you have? Well, I think one thing I've talked about a lot is we have a lot of confidence in our 12 and 13 pitchers. So. It may look a little different than than some other teams that are a little more traditional. Although we're we can be traditional with you know obviously running out Massa and and James and and Sevy, um, but there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, you know. And the bottom line is, so far in the postseason through what, five games, we've pitched really well, including in last night's game where we lost. So. Um, you know, in the in the end, you got to get 27 outs. Last night, we needed more than 27 outs. Um, and we feel like we have a pitching staff capable of doing that at a high level. I think so far we've shown that and expect us to continue. Thanks, Aaron. We'll see right. you tomorrow.